love that set the captives free The same love that opened eyes to see He's calling us all by name You are calling us all by name The same God that spread the heavens wide The same God that was crucified is called Good morning. It's really lovely to be able to worship together um, this morning and it's great that you're able to join us as GVC um, to worship today. Um, we're going to hear this morning from Kate who's going to give us an update on what it's like working in schools at this time and we've also got an update from Keith Hoyles. And later on in our, our time together Dave will be speaking on the Good Shepherd. So before we go forward let me just pray for us father god we just thank you for your love for us father we thank you that you are a god who is with us wherever we are we thank you for that amazing thing about you being able to transcend space and time so that we actually are able to worship together although not physically lord give us a real sense of your presence this morning be with each one of us as we hear about your kingdom and your love for us. Father, bless us in this time of worship, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
One day, a flock of sheep was eating green, green grass, jumping and playing in the beautiful pasture they called home. The sheep loved their home, and they knew they had a good, loving shepherd. Their favorite part of the whole day was when the shepherd called to them. They knew his voice and ran to him because they knew he loved them and took care of them. Whenever the shepherd called, they came running. Wherever he led, they followed. They just wanted to be close to him. One day, an evil robber climbed over the fence to their pasture. He was looking for sheep just like them to take far, far away. The sheep didn't see him. They weren't even looking. They were just eating their green, green grass, jumping and playing in the beautiful pasture they called home. They knew their shepherd would call them at any moment, and they couldn't wait. Just then, the robber called. Sheep, oh sheep, come to me. The sheep looked up in fear. What was this? Where was that strange voice coming from? They didn't know, but they did know one thing. That wasn't their shepherd's voice. So they ran away from the robber. They ran and they ran and they ran. And no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't catch them. Jesus is the good shepherd. When we pray, we get to know his voice. So whenever he calls, we know it's safe to come running. Good morning, I'm Kate Weston. And for those of you that don't know me, I've been coming to Godena Valley Church since I was about seven. It's quite a long time now. I'm a primary school teacher and I'll be starting my 20th year at St Peter's in September. During my career, I've seen a lot of change. A change of government, the way we test children, the need for data to be scrutinised and the way we plan and deliver lessons for all children. But it's fair to say that there's been no change or impact as sudden and as extreme as lockdown. Teachers and schools, like many professions, weren't ready for this new way of working. And to get your head around the new situation so quickly provided many challenges for schools and for families. My school is part of the Lighthouse Trust in Portishead, which has many local schools within it. As a trust, many decisions and new ways of working have had to be decided quickly and they've had to be agreed. But they've also, each school has had to have their own individual decisions to make for their school and how it works for them. In June, schools reopened to some year groups, year one, year six and reception, whilst continuing the provision for the key worker children as well. Children's current classes of 30 were split in half. 15 of them had their own class teacher, if that teacher was fit and healthy to come back to work. And the other 15 had a different teacher, a TA, somebody they'd not seen in the school before. Some were taught in their original classroom and some were in a different classroom or a working space such as the hall. All the classrooms had to be changed. All soft furnishings had to be taken out and bookcases and resources on shelves have had to be covered in cling film and taped up. The only thing the children can access in their new working space was the one allocated seat that they can sit at at a dedicated table um, with a few items on it that they have been given in a plastic bag that zips up a whiteboard and pen, a pencil and rubber, and a, and a writing book. I work in reception and the freedom of choice that is key to early years has been taken away. The children can no longer self-select independent activities. Instead, three boxes of construction or small world are on a rotation so that they can be thoroughly cleaned in between use. Before starting back in June, I was worried that the children's once loved safe space would be so unrecognisable that it would affect their desire to come back to school and their love of learning. But in these last six weeks, I have been reminded again of children's resilience and how adaptable they can be. So often it's the adults worrying and overthinking a problem or a situation. And when it comes to it, the children just take it in their stride and they cope. Spending time with just 15 of my class has given me the opportunity to talk to them in a way a normal timetable pressure would never have allowed. And whereas I feel really sad that I've not been able to be with the other 15 of my class, I know that they're receiving a similar experience with a different member of staff and that's given them confidence in a wider school sense. The work that's been set has been the same so that the children in school and the children at home are receiving the same work. 
Over the weeks, most bubbles in my school have increased from maybe nine or 10 children up to about 14, 15 now. Parents seem to have becoming less anxious about sending them back and trusting that schools are doing the very best that they can to keep everybody safe in this situation. We are a church school at St Peter's and it's been very important to our head teacher and staff that messages have not been lost. We've continued with collective worship. Our head teacher has delivered this via Teams so that the children at home can access it at the same time the children in school are. Clergy from local churches have provided a service for us to watch and it's remained a part of our school day to incorporate Bible stories, discussions and prayer. In my class, I've always got worship music playing in the afternoon, mostly because I find it calms them down whilst they're building with Lego or rolling around on the floor. That's them, not me. My experience is just one example of how school is working under these extreme pressures. But I wanted to reassure you that despite all the worry and red tape and new rules we have to follow, in my experience, the children are happy. They're laughing and smiling, they're mixing with some of their friends and they want to come to school. They are now in a new sense of routine and a new normal. And although it is a far cry from what we left in March, it is the best we can do right now. I wish that all year groups could have experienced going back in some form before the summer. As for the majority, years two to five will have been at home from March until September. What will September look like? Well, it's a big relief that we can now have bubbles of 30 and not 15, which means I can have my whole class back again. But life will not be back to the normal that we all yearn for, for quite some time. Rules and social distancing will still factor in. There'll be no hot dinners or collective worship in the hall. Play times and start times at the end of the day are all going to be staggered. And there are so many more changes. Teachers are amazing though, at staying positive in front of a class. But underneath, it's not the way anybody wants to teach. It's not why anyone would have entered into this profession and staff morale could be a concern long-term. So, if primary schools are on your heart and the children of our town we live in, please can you remember the following when you pray. A number of staff still feel anxious about being in school or returning and parents about sending their children. Some children have to stay at home or to shield a parent and sibling and are frustrated that they are not able to go back to school. Head teachers and senior leadership have hundreds of logistical things to organise and decide before a safe return in September. And so many people are very quick to criticise their decisions. Above all, please pray that the children are happy to come to school, the parents are happy to send them, and they're supportive of the school's decisions, and that staff can stay focused providing an environment for the children that feeds their natural love of learning. Thank you. Ali and Pauline are going to lead us this morning in our family prayers. Let us pray. Father God, we worship you. We praise you for your creation. We thank you for the world. We thank you for all that you've done for us, all that you bless us with, all that you save us from. Father, we don't know what the future holds but we do know that you hold the future. And so we bring you our prayers. We pray for our church family. We pray for our leaders, Lord, for wisdom, for grace, for inspiration. Father, we pray for our family members. Father, we pray for those that are particularly on our heart and just in a moment's silence, let's think about the people that are particularly close to us. Father, I pray particularly for those that are facing 
or living with cancer. I pray for Margaret, Lord, that you will sustain her through chemotherapy and that you will heal her, that you will reduce the, the tumour. And I pray for Brian, Lord, in a very long-term um, process that he's going through. I pray, Lord, that you will heal him. I pray for Pauline as she waits for results. I pray they will be good news. You are a God of good news. And Lord, I also particularly want to pray for Joy and for Tom. Thank you for seeing Tom through COVID-19. Thank you for their relationship. And I really pray, Lord, that they will find somewhere much nearer Porter's Head so they can spend much more time together. Father, I praise you for Laura's results, that she is clear from this disease. But Lord, we do know people who are suffering from it or people that we particularly don't want to get it. And so in a moment's silence, let's just name those people before our God. And Father, we pray for our town of Portishead. I pray for particularly for people who've lost their jobs, for people who can't pay their rent, for people who can't afford food, for people who are alone and fed up with it, for people who are scared. And we thank you, Lord, that Porter's Head is in your hands and that you love us, you love all of us. And again, just in a moment of silence, we just bring before you, Lord, people in Porter's Head who are on our hearts. Lord, we thank you for all those who have served us over the last months. National Health, Star Health Service staff, teachers, police, refuse collectors, shop workers and so many others. We continue to pray that you will protect them from catching COVID-19. Thank you that there has been a reduction in the number of cases of the virus that has meant that some of the restrictions have been lifted. But we pray that you will help all of us to be wise in what we do and that people will obey the guidelines that we have been given so that we do not have a second wave of infections. We pray for our MPs and our government and others in positions of power Give them the wisdom to make the right decisions, both in connection with the virus pandemic and also as we move closer to the end of the year and our final departure from the EU. We pray for business leaders who have hard decisions to make concerning their work workforce and who will need to make people redundant. We ask that they will be fair in what they do. We pray for those who have lost their jobs and face financial difficulties as a result. Father, provide for their needs, we pray. And Lord, we thank you for the world that you have given us to live in, for its beauty, for its riches. And we ask that you will forgive us that we have not been good stewards and that many of the things we do have harmed your creation. We realise that the virus is not going to go away and that long term we will need to make changes in the way that we live. Lord, we ask that you will help us to make choices that are not selfish ones and so that our world becomes a better place. Amen. Amen.
I don't know about you, but the last three months have been rather strange. Whether you have been at home because that's where you normally are, because you're now working from home, you've been furloughed, or for what other reason, you're home. Fortunately, uh, for myself, I've been at work. But despite the lovely weather that we've been having, I've not made most of the grounds that we've got here. But it's really strange because these picnic benches are empty. And ordinarily with this weather, we'd expect to see staff and students having meetings, having their coffee, having lunch or whatever at these benches. And they're just empty. But what we have seen, which is different, is the wildlife. In all the years I've been here, I can't say that I've seen the deer as close as they have been. They've been on that meadow behind us. And I've seen them at least twice in the last three weeks just munching away and enjoying it. Somehow, with all of this quietness, the animals, the wildlife are getting closer to the buildings and everything that's connected with mankind. But despite their seeming lack of concern, the animals haven't got as far as walking into the buildings yet. But ages ago, and I'm reminded with our tower, Mankind in the Old Testament in Genesis 11 decided that they wanted to try and go a bit further and try and get closer to God than they'd been before. They wanted to show that they were almost on a par with him. But God didn't want it. And so the tower was destroyed and mankind was sent in all different directions, speaking different languages. But that's not the end of it, because God does want us to come to him. He sent Jesus, his only son, to die for us, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He wants everyone, those who feel weary, those who feel weak and lost. But it's a bit like the animals coming towards us, coming towards this busyness here, because it's quieter. Because the churches are not meeting as churches, We've heard so often of people that have come and watched the services online. Maybe you're one of those people. Maybe now's the time for you to consider, do you want to know more about Jesus? And if so, perhaps get in contact with Dave or one of the other church leaders or contact somebody whose name that you know. But certainly it's time to consider, do you go beyond that boundary? Do you start to make contact? Do you want to know God? Do you want to know Jesus? The decision's up to you. Thank you.
Hi everyone, we're going to be looking at the Good Shepherd from John 10 um, this morning. How long has it been since lockdown? Three and a half months? Things are beginning to open a, a little bit, which are, is great. Barbers, for instance. And you know, gosh, do some of us need barbers? Some of us are beginning to look a bit like Boris Johnson on a good day. Some of us, like myself, are a little bit more low maintenance, a pair of clippers and a willing daughter to use them. I want you to spare a thought for Shrek. Now, this is Shrek. He's a, a marine, I think that's the way it's pronounced, a merino sheep. You can ask Carol if I got it wrong. A merino sheep in New Zealand. And he accidentally wandered off and he lost his farmer. Now, you know, that newfound freedom might have seemed wonderful at first. But the problem was Shrek's fleece didn't stop growing. And after six years, he looked like this. Imagine how uncomfortable it is for a sheep to be that covered in wool. He could hardly move. He was almost blind. He would have been overwhelmed by the heat. But fortunately for him, after six years, Shrek the sheep was found and the farmer swiftly had him shorn. And here he is, as happy as Larry. It's all over. Today's reading is about the good shepherd, John 10, verses 1 to 10. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has bought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the stranger. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Christianity is first and foremost about relationship. Now, there are many people who believe uh, religion is about philosophy. Religion is about a leap of faith or a way of being a good person. But Christianity is first and foremost about a relationship. And that's why Jesus uses the metaphor of the shepherd. Now, it probably doesn't resonate quite so well with us. We, we think of farmers today as people driving around in jeeps or those four-wheel buggies, there's hundreds of sheep, they've got dogs, it's one man and his dog thing going on. But in ancient times, 
ancient shepherds had much more of an intimate relationship with their sheep. Just as you might call your dog and she hears her name and comes running over, well, an ancient shepherd had names for each one of his sheep. He'd call them and they would come running. The sheep hears his voice. He calls his own sheep by name. He leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Jesus uses all sorts of different picture language to describe God. A hen gathering its chicks under its wings. A shepherd caring for his sheep whom he knows by name. A dad waiting at the gatepost for his troubled teenage son to return home. They're all about relationships. Human beings are desperate for relationships. I don't know whether you know the American sitcom How I Met Your Mother, but in that sitcom is a character, a character called Barney Stinson. And, you know, in most of the episodes that we see him in that series, he's a rather arrogant man, a Lothario with, with no respect for women, no respect for relationships. But in one episode, we see something of, uh, of the backstory to him. He's shown as a little boy with his mother and he's basically asking her why he doesn't have a, why he doesn't have a dad. He's asking her, who is my dad? And you get this video clip of this little six-year-old asking his mother, who is my dad? Who is my dad? Why can't you tell me? Eventually she runs out of patience and she says, oh, I don't know that guy and she points at the tv at the host of the show the price is right so you know our five-year-old boy becomes obsessed with the idea that the host of the price is right is his dad he sits before the tv showing uh, uh, the price is right with all his school prizes and photos and everything that says something about him so that his dad will see them. It's all desperately sad. But Annie is desperate for a relationship. As a little boy, he's desperate for a dad. As an adult, he's desperate for something meaningful, but ends up in a self-destruct mode. I think we're all desperate for relationships. Human relationships are important. It's interesting that during lockdown, people could log on to live stream services from anywhere in the world. But according to surveys, most people are not choosing in general to go to big famous churches. They're logging into their own church. Now, we made a real decision during lockdown to emphasise the church's family, everyone with a part to play. Now, why are we logging on to GVC? Because you have relationship here. Even when people are logging onto a church they don't normally go to, which is happening, it's usually because they've got family members there, or it's the church where this friend went to, or it's a church where they used to live. Of all the churches people log on to, into the, uh, this lockdown, it's ones where they feel relationship, primarily. It's one where they feel a connection. And you know, human relationships are important, but we need more than that. It's a bit of a cliche, but we have a hole inside us that no human relationship can ever satisfy. And that actually we'll end up damaging uh, the relationship if we try to make it fulfill that. We're designed for a relationship with God, for one whose voice we instinctively know. St. Augustine said this, our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. The picture of God in the Bible is of one who cares for us. The father who teaches his toddler to walk. The shepherd who takes the sheep to where the pasture is. That ancient shepherd who lays across the door posts to prevent wolves getting into the paddock. He becomes a human gate for the sheep. I am the gate, says Jesus. So God protects us. Sometimes in our life we may go through phases when we give up on God. 
And, you know, it may feel liberating at first, giving up on all those strictures, you know, whether it's things you thought God might disapprove of or whether it's even just getting up on a Sunday morning. But remember Shrek, Shrek the sheep, how liberating it must have felt for him to wander off without the farmer telling him what to do. But as his wall grew longer and longer, as he struggled to move, as he struggled to see, as he became overwhelmed by heat, he desperately, desperately needed the good shepherd to take care of him. I am the gate, says Jesus. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. In all of this, though, Jesus also gives us a warning. Not only is there a good shepherd who wants to give us life in abundance, life that is the best possible life it could be, there are also false shepherds. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And, you know, if we look to fill that God-shaped hole within us with other people, I think we'll only get hurt. You know, if we look again at that story of, of Barney and How I Met Your Mother, the now adult Barney in that series, he goes on The Price is Right. And he, he goes on it basically because he's desperate to meet the man he believes to be his dad. And the back story to that is that he spent years practicing the answers to make sure he does well when he's on The Price is Right. At one point, he says to a very confused host, would you say you're proud of me? And another, during a 30 second countdown, he spends 25 seconds of it trying to show family photos to the man he believes is his dad before dashing in at the last moment with the right answer. But you know, finally, he can't bring himself to say what he wants to say to the host because he doesn't want his dream to disappear. And he knows this man is not really his dad. Our hearts are restless until they find their rest in God. You know, if we try and put other people in God's place, not just evil people, good people, husbands, wives, children, mums, if we try and put them in the place of God, they're going to let us down because they're only human. There's only one who can lead us out and in to find pasture. There's only one who can bring abundant life. So two things. Firstly, to set aside all the false shepherds, including the idols we make of family and loved ones, and turn to Jesus, the good shepherd. We all make mistakes. We all mess up. We all listen to wrong voices. We go looking to fill the empty void of that God-shaped hole with relationships that are not appropriate, even ones that are well-intentioned. Secondly, let, let's ask the one we can truly, truly turn to, the Good Shepherd, to show us what we can learn from him as we seek to follow him, as we seek to have relationship with him. The one who knows us, he knows us by name, the one who lays down his life for us, wonderful saviour, wonderful Lord, wonderful friend. And you know, if you're listening to this and, and long for that relationship with Jesus, would like to find out more about this Jesus, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to talk with you. I'd love to pray with you. Please get in contact with the church website. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, our good shepherd, please forgive us where we have not listened to your voice and have thought, said and done things that have been wrong. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Please forgive us when we followed the crowd rather than following you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Please forgive us where we've been stubborn, wanting to go our own way 
instead of going your way. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus, that as our good shepherd, you laid down your life so that we might be forgiven. Oh, we receive your forgiveness today. Bring us back onto your safe path and help us to listen to you and follow you. Amen. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quite put quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head, my cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back at home in the house of God for the rest of my life. Hello, a very warm welcome to this year's National Parliamentary Prayer Breakfast live from Westminster Hall. Eternal goodness, deliver us from evil. Eternal power, be our strength. Eternal peace, lead us to your presence. Eternal wisdom, scatter the confusion of division and hatred. Eternal spring of life, grant us joy and hope. Eternal compassion, have mercy upon us. As we... Heavenly Father, today we pray for all the people of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. We lift them up before you and ask you to bless them. You have been there for us in times of crisis. As a people, we call out to you. For our folk who have suffered, who have lost loved ones, who feel alone, stressed by life, fearful for their future, their employment, health and their families. We ask you to come upon us all and let us know your caring love and calming presence. Thank you for doctors, nurses, care workers and other staff within the NHS and social care sector for their dedication and their care. Please encourage and protect them. Please give them strength and the resilience to continue to serve others. We also our God and Heavenly Father, you are the Creator God who never changes, whose love cannot be measured and with whom nothing is impossible. Your love is evident in the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ when he died on the cross for us. We pray for our Queen and her family. We praise and thank you for her devotion and faithful life. We pray for all those in authority, for our Prime Minister, for members of the Cabinet, that they may be wise and humble, that they and all who serve in Westminster and in the devolved governments might be marked by self-sacrifice, free from the love of power and self-importance. You we alone pray. know how we need your rod and your staff to guide us. We were shocked and appalled by the killing of George Floyd. Please give us courage to consider the deep questions his death raises. Give us wisdom about how to bring about reform and healing. Give us courage to take a clear stand against racism and enable us to build the systems and structures where all can thrive equally. Land. We are humbling ourselves and we are praying, Father, heal our land. Give us and all world leaders wisdom, knowledge and understanding the World Health Organization and international organizations as we respond to the coronavirus pandemic. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our reading has these remarkable words about Jesus Christ. 
being in the very nature of God. He did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. It's the story of a God who does not stay in heaven waiting for us to serve him, but enters into our world in the person of Jesus Christ to serve us. We've heard many inspiring stories of people who died of the virus while serving others as nurses, hospital porters. And maybe the reason those stories touch us so deeply is that they're a small echo of the great story at the heart of Christian faith, of a God who loved the world so much that he gave his own son for us so that we might know the peace and freedom that comes from being known and loved by the God who made us. This amazing grace, as we will sing in a moment, is a story that's had extraordinary motivating power over the centuries and still does today. It inspires countless people to do that thing that doesn't come naturally to us, to make those large and small sacrifices for the sake of our neighbors and sometimes even our enemies, not just in lockdown, but as a way of life. May this amazing grace of God inspire us to be people of peace, hope and love in our communities during these challenging times.
We look forward to seeing you again next week when Dave is going to be sharing with us again, this time on I Am The True Vine. Um, I just want to remind you that Cluedo uh, lockdown is coming very soon and um, please uh, remember to tell your friends and neighbours to, to tune in um, and we also um, I also want to remind you to join us for the Zoom prayer meeting on Monday uh, the 13th of July um, at 8 o'clock um, and now I just want to um, finish with a blessing God bless you and keep you God smile on you and gift you. God look you full in the face and make you prosper. Amen. The same love that set the captives free. The same love that opened eyes to see. He's calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. The same God that spread the heavens. Why? The same God that was crucified is called.